Welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to the Modern Theory of Polarization, a series of modules to help you understand how the electric polarization is defined, calculated and measured in bulk periodic solids. Brought to you by Schrodinger's Kittens Productions. In this module, we will explore some unusual physics that occurs at the interface between two centrosymmetric nonpolar materials, lanthanum aluminate, often written as LaO, and strontium titanate, or STO. First, a reminder of what we learned in module two about the polarization of a centrosymmetric lattice. We considered this one-dimensional crystal lattice in which the anions and cations are evenly spaced so that both the anions and cations are centers of inversion. We set the charges on the ions to plus and minus the electronic charge and the unit cell length to A. Then we calculated the polarization, defined to be the dipole moment per unit length for different choices of unit cells. And we obtained different answers depending on the unit cell. The unit cell on the left, for example, has polarization P equal to E over 2, and that on the right, P equal to minus E over 2. E here is the electronic charge. We saw that the polarization forms a lattice of values, which in this case are E over 2, 3E over 2, 5E over 2, and so on, and all of the negative values, or E over 2 plus N times E, where N is any integer. The polarization quantum, PQ, is equal to E in this case. Remember, it's defined to be the electronic charge times the lattice vector divided by the unit cell volume, or the unit cell length in one dimension. So we can write the allowed values of the polarization as PQ over 2 plus N times PQ, where again N is any positive or negative integer. In the exercises for module two, we noted that the polarization values form a lattice of numbers, each a polarization quantum apart, and that the symmetry of this so-called polarization lattice is centrosymmetric, reflecting the symmetry of the crystal lattice. Notably, the polarization lattice in this particular case does not contain zero as a value, even though the system is nonpolar. Now there is one other possibility for constructing a centrosymmetric lattice of equally spaced values, which is to center it around zero so that it contains plus and minus PQ, plus and minus two PQ, and so on. This time, the inversion center of the lattice is at P is equal to zero rather than halfway between plus and minus a half PQ. Here's an example of a one-dimensional crystal lattice that has such a polarization lattice. It consists of divalent cations separated by two monovalent anions, so that both the cations and the anions are inversion centers. For consistency, let's call the unit cell length A again and work out the polarization of some representative unit cells. For this unit cell, the polarization is proportional to minus the electronic charge times one sixth A plus two E times a half A minus E times five sixth A, which is zero. Whereas for the unit cell shown in blue, the polarization is equal to the electronic charge or the polarization quantum and so on. Interestingly, if we make a connection between these two crystal lattices, there has to be a change in the polarization value at the point where they join, even though both the lattices are nonpolar. Now let's take a look at examples of real materials that have these two different types of centrosymmetric polarization lattices. We'll choose the examples of lanthanum aluminate and strontium titanate because their structural similarity means that they can be connected 
allowing us to explore the consequences of the change in polarization at their interface. Both lanthanum aluminate and strontium titanate have the ABO3 perovskite structure, in which the B-site cation, aluminum or titanium, is surrounded by an octahedron of oxygens with the A-site cation, lanthanum or strontium, at the unit cell corners. There is an important difference though, in that in lanthanum aluminate, both the A and B site cations are trivalent, whereas in strontium titanate, the A site cation is strontium two plus and the B site is titanium four plus. Let's calculate the polarization of lanthanum aluminate in the X direction, again, setting the unit cell length to A and taking these five atoms shown in orange as our basis. We find a polarization of 1 over the unit cell volume plus 3 times 0 plus 2 times 0 from the A site and the oxygen in the x is equal to 0 plane minus 2 times A over 2 twice for the remaining two oxygens plus 3 times A over 2 for the B site ion, all times the electronic charge. This reduces to minus a half E times A over V, or minus a half polarization quantum. Our lanthanum aluminate has the polarization lattice type that contains the half quantums and doesn't contain zero. When we repeat the procedure for strontium titanate with the same choice of basis atoms, we obtain a polarization value of zero, indicating that strontium titanate has the other polarization lattice type. So what happens at the interface between lanthanum aluminate and strontium titanate? Well, even though both materials are nonpolar, there is a change in polarization at the interface. We call this change a polar discontinuity and its size in this case is half of the polarization quantum. The polar discontinuity gives rise to a bound charge at the interface equal to its magnitude of half a quantum or half an electron per unit cell. This is analogous to the bound charge on the surface of a ferroelectric that we discussed in module five. Classical electrostatics tells us that the layer of bound charge generates an electric field perpendicular to the interface. This electric field can have the effect of polarizing the lattices of ions, pushing the anions and cations in opposite directions along the field direction. Or alternatively, if there are free charges available, either from impurities or by creating electron hole pairs across the band gap, these free charges can move to the interface and screen the bound charge, causing a conducting layer at the interface. And indeed, a conducting layer is measured at the LAO-STO interface, as first reported in this paper here. Take a second or two to think about how remarkable this is. Both lanthanum aluminate and strontium titanate are good insulators with wide band gaps, and they are both nonpolar. But because they have different origins to their centrosymmetric polarization lattices, the interface between them is metallic. Superconductivity has even been observed at low temperature, similar to the superconductivity which is measured in bulk strontium titanate. The exercise for this module explores an alternative picture for the conducting interface between LAO and STO, which considers the individual layers of atoms within the perovskite structure. Along a cubic 100 direction, the layers alternate between AO and BO2 combinations of ions. And this means that in the strontium titanate block, where the strontium A ion is divalent and the titanium B ion has charge plus four, both the SRO and TiO2 layers are charge neutral. 
In the lanthanum aluminate block, on the other hand, the LaO layer has charge plus one per unit cell, and the AlO2 has charge minus one per unit cell. So if we look at the layer charge density as a function of position across an LaO-SDO heterostructure, then it's zero through the strontium titanate slab and then alternates between plus and minus one in the lanthanum aluminate slab. Your task is to use your knowledge of basic electrostatics to work out the electric field and the electrostatic potential corresponding to that charge density. You should find that the electrostatic potential diverges with thickness which will lead to an energetically unstable situation in a real system. Then think about how you could modify the interface in order to prevent the potential from diverging and how your solution will affect the interfacial properties. If you need a hint, then take a look at the last paper on the further reading list. Then, when you're happy with your answers, come back and join us for Module 7 in the series when we'll introduce the concept of the Born Effective Charge. Thanks for listening.